Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A Detroit police officer in crisis opens fire on the officers responding to his own 911 call. Detroit police said that officer was suicidal and injured two of his colleagues. Glad you're with us tonight at 11. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. Those officers returned fire, killing one of their own. This situation played out this afternoon in the area of East Davidson and St. Alvin near the Highland Park Water Tower. Pam Osborne has been following this story all day, and Pam, that officer was off duty when this incident took place. Yeah, and this really was a call unlike any other that they responded to today. You mentioned it was a phone call about a suicide in progress. Just imagine these officers responding to the scene to find their fellow off-duty officer in uniform in crisis. Condolences and uh, my prayers go out to those that any tragedy, anything happen to anybody, anybody lies, anything. Monday's 911 call from a man in distress has left many heavy hearts all throughout the departments. Tragically, uh, we are not immune to mental crisis. We're, we're just like everyone else. The caller, a 45-year-old highly trained special response team officer with 13 years on the force, was in crisis. Two responding officers from the 11th precinct arrived to help. They were met with gunfire. He uh, is shooting in the air. The officers uh, check the area, but when they hear the gunshots, they retreat and take cover uh, because they recognize that he has a high-powered rifle. The officer, who was off duty at the time, walked up to the vehicle they had taken cover behind, shooting at it and the officers. One officer was hit in the leg, the other shot in the thigh before one of them returned fire. Their fellow officer died at the scene. The officers are, are taught that they're that their fellow officers are brothers and sisters and that at all costs you protect them and defend them. So only a person struggling with a mental health crisis would turn the gun on fellow officers in a situation like this. Local 4 crime and safety expert and former police officer Darnell Blackburn hopes conversations begin and that the stigma people, especially police officers, feel around mental health can subside. When police officers are in crisis, they need to understand that getting help is not weakness. Chief James White echoed those same thoughts, adding the officer, who they have not yet identified, had no previous mental health conditions, however, was dealing with a physical degenerative condition, but had recently returned to full duty. Uh, it's a tragedy for the city, uh, but it's just a reminder that every Detroiter should just be enormously grateful uh, for the commitment of the service of the men and women of this department. And we know that counselors will be available to officers and the families all impacted by this tragic situation that took place today. As for those two officers who were shot, they were transported to Detroit Receiving Hospital, uh, both listed in stable condition. Reporting live tonight outside of DPD headquarters, I'm Pamela Osborne. Local four. Okay, Pamela, thank you. And we'll have more from our crime and safety expert, Darnell Blackburn, coming up tomorrow morning. And we would like to remind you, too, if you or anyone you know is in need of help, the Suicide Crisis Lifeline is always available 24 hours a day. All you have to do is call or text 988. Detroit police also investigating four people being shot. This happened around three this afternoon on Haverhill near East Outer Drive. One person died from their injuries. We're told one victim is stable. Two others are critical. No word yet on a possible shooter. Tonight, it was the second and final debate between the two candidates in the showdown for the right to succeed Debbie Stabenow in the U.S. Senate. Channel 7 hosting a frequently testy exchange between Democrat Alyssa Slotkin and Republican Mike Rogers, who have spent a lot of the campaign arguing over China and electric vehicles. They're going to cost, according to uh, Ford, a uh, CEO, about 400,000 manufacturing jobs in the state of Michigan will go away with EV mandates. That is unacceptable, and you don't have to do it. We can build hybrid cars in America, and by the way, sell Our cars time. that people want to buy. There is no EV mandate. I don't care what you want to drive. Um, it does not matter to me. 
but I don't understand the position of my opponent who says he cares about American manufacturing but doesn't want to compete against China. I want that manufacturing here. I don't care what you drive. I want to build them. Slotkin and Rogers are the rare candidates who can challenge each other's records earned while they represented basically the same district in the U.S. House. But they seem to agree on very little, from gun control to immigration. They also sparred over the issue of abortion, Slotkin alleging that Rogers would work to outlaw it in America, while Rogers insisted he will follow the will of Michiganders. I did not support overturning Roe. If codifying Roe v. Wade came in front of the U.S. Senate, I would vote for it. And now he's going to come out because he's put his finger in the wind. He said that, uh-oh, I need to win an election. Better not piss anybody off. And so he's changed his position completely and now wants you to believe that he's going to be a protector of women. The state of Michigan and the people of Michigan went to the polls and voted. They voted to make abortion legal and they put it a part of their constitution, our constitution. And so I won't do anything when I go back to the United States Senate to undo the vote of the people. Now, our most recent Local 4 Detroit news poll shows Slot concurrently with a three and a half point lead over Rogers, but that's just inside the margin of error in the poll with three weeks to go. All right, we turn now to the weather. Chilly night across Metro Detroit. Needed the jacket, yeah, probably, that's right? right? Or maybe the sweater. Let's yeah. get over to Kim. Sweater? Adam. Sweater weather tonight, <laughs> Kim. Sweater weather is back, and it's certainly going to be cold tonight. It's already cold. I don't know when we move beyond chilly to cold. We might have to reserve cold for when it gets really cold around here. But right now, it is a pretty night. We do have the clouds that are helping prevent some of that frost development that they have just to the west of us. 43 degrees right now out at Metro Airport on our way down to lows in the 30s. So you can see we'll continue dropping as we head towards tomorrow morning. But again, those clouds will help keep us at least a little bit warmer and prevent those hard freezes. And snow is right around the corner. It's only going to be another month or so. That's the average anyway. The average first snow is November 16th. The earliest we've ever seen snow is October 12th, and the latest would be in December, December 19th uh, to be exact. But we have a couple of flakes that are possible to overnight tonight up into the thumb, but most of you will be sleeping, and it certainly won't be anything that totals up. 30 degrees tomorrow morning in some of the suburbs, 39 at Metro Airport at 8 a.m. By noon, we're at 46, 50 degrees. That's all we can make it to tomorrow. And in fact, some cities will stay in the 40s, but don't put away those shorts just yet. We'll be back into the 70s before you know it. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Okay, Kim. New at 11, charges are filed against the driver in a deadly police chase and crash in Hamtramck. Yeah, this happened Thursday afternoon near the intersection of Conant and McNichols in Hamtramck. Prosecutors say 23-year-old Aliyah Glenn drove away from officers during a traffic stop. They say she ran a red light and then crashed into another vehicle. A 37-year-old man died at the scene. Another man died at the hospital the next day. So Glenn faces several charges, including reckless driving and driving with a suspended license causing death. A civil rights organization is calling for hate crime charges after the man accused of slashing a 7-year-old girl's throat. 72-year-old Gary Lansky faces several charges, including assault with intent to murder. Prosecutors say Lansky tried to stab 7-year-old Saida on top of slashing her throat before approaching her grandmother with a knife behind his back. Family and community members say she was targeted because of her race. This was not a random act of violence. This was a tragic visage attack. This was an attack on our community, on our children, and our sense of safety. Now I feel scared and I don't want to go to school anymore and going outside alone. I just like staying in my backyard. In response, Prosecutor Kim Worthy's team sent us the following statement on why the team hasn't pursued hate crime charges. And that statement reads, if we had any evidence that this was a hate crime and we would could prove it beyond a reasonable doubt, we would not hesitate to charge it as a hate crime. I'm happy to have the prosecutor handling this case reach out to the family for an in-person meeting." End quote. Meanwhile, Lansky will be back in court in the morning for a bond redetermination hearing. 
Aiden Hutchinson is recovering tonight after breaking his tibia and fibula yesterday, both bones in his lower leg in that game against the Dallas Cowboys. The Lions saying that the surgery was a success. The Lions star released a statement on Instagram tonight through the House of Hutch. It reads in part, Aiden wants you all to know that his healing redemption story has begun. He is holding the motto of Detroit close to heart. Resurg Resurgit Cinerabus. He will rise from the ashes. We have posted the full statement on our website at clickondetroit.com. In fact, Hobie will have more coming up in sports. A Detroit answer for a guy who's yeah. become such a Detroit icon already. The Detroit Auto Show will be here before we know it. And today, organizers announced tickets are on sale. Right around the corner here. The event runs January 10th through the 20th at Huntington Place, starting with a charity preview on the 10th. It's returning to its original roots after a two-year move to warmer September to create more outdoor experiences. The public show is January 11th through the 20th. Tickets are $20.